We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, we are going to be talking about a topic that many have been speculating about over the last few years. It has to do with Rolex. I know some of you are a little bit fed up with Rolex videos, but there's a lot going on with the brand currently, so it's a little bit difficult to avoid. And I think this is somewhat big news. But once again, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. Do not forget to like and subscribe. It really does help a whole bunch and make sure to leave in the comments below things you'd like to see in the future. Of course, you can find me on Instagram, the real John P and delraywatch.com where we have some incredibly tasty inventory that we've just taken in, including a very limited edition, super high end Laurent Ferrier, which is going to, uh, Really impress some of you guys that are into the tourbillon, some of the more complicated watches. So you can check that out as well. Today on the wrist, I have an H Moser Mayu from my personal collection in white gold. I really love this thing and I think Moser does a fabulous job with watches currently. So the topic, you know, we, the whole topic today is around Rolex authorized dealers and wait lists for popular models, the Pepsis, the, you know, the, the normal GMT masters, the Submariners, especially the Daytonas, you know, these are hot in demand models. And there's this concept of a waiting list. Many people, you know, I'm sure you'll leave in the comments below. will say, I went into my uh, local AD. I got on the waiting list. I got called back in a few weeks. Yes, this happens, but many people are incredibly upset. You know, they'll go on a waiting list, oftentimes in a major city, and they'll never get a call back. And there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of insider talk as to why this is. And I've talked about it. Others have talked about it, but essentially what happens is the watches are being sold to people that have high spending with that authorized dealer. So, you know, if you spend a lot of money and you're a big collector and I'm talking, you know, hundred thousand dollars plus, and you buy several watches per year in other labels as well, right? Not just Rolex. Then of course you're going to get a call. And this is, this is pretty much common at this point. Now there's up until now, there has not been anyone from an authorized dealer to actually go on record and say this verbatim. A lot of talking, a lot of speculation, a lot of people that were really honestly very upset about this for, you know, it's kind of silly, but upset nonetheless, and very vocal about this practice. And so recently at the Dubai Watch Week, um, a big festival for that part of the world where they unveil all kinds of watches and they talk about different things and they have different panel discussions, there was one of the world's largest authorized dealers that have every label, mostly for the Middle East region. And someone from that authorized dealer gave a, a discussion at a panel and they, they admitted to this practice. You know, they said, you know, pretty much, and I won't tell you who it, who it was, but if you Google around, you type this into the internet, you can find multiple articles about this and also videos, but essentially this, you know, this president of this company, of this AD in the Middle East said this practice is true. He gave an example of where, you know, someone would be getting a Christmas surprise, perhaps of a, of a Rolex Pepsi, if they had bought a couple of different watches of other labels that they had. Now, this is interesting, right? What this goes to show us is that certain authorized dealers now will be punishing the customers that they think might be watch flippers, right? You go on the forums, you see Daytonas for double retail, maybe a little bit less now. Some of the other models, especially when they come out, those are people kind of known as flippers in the watch community, in the watch retailer community. And you see something like this coming from a president of a very large authorized dealer just admitting point blank that they show this kind of favoritism. So it goes twofold, right? It shows favoritism for people with higher spending with the company, but also it looks like there is some serious attempt to weed out the people that they speculate to be these flippers, to drive up the pre-owned market and also leave a bad taste in serious watch collectors mouths. And I get this feedback all the time in previous videos that I've made in the comments section where people say I was a hardcore Rolex collector and this happens and I just can't get one and now they're very upset. I think there's some confusion that's coming from some larger authorized dealers where they might be thinking that those 
hardcore Rolex collectors are in fact flippers. So there could be this subset of collectors that I see where you're not a flipper, you only like Rolex, you don't buy other watches, and you never are able to buy that watch at retail and you're forced to pay, you know, 30, 40, 100% more than the retail price. So I think it's incredibly interesting and we as collectors need to take note of what some authorized dealers are doing and how they really are punishing loyal Rolex collectors, right? Because if they're going to just not sell you a Rolex because you're only buying Rolex, I think that's a little bit disappointing because they're trying to push push you into these other labels. Now, what do you guys think? I would really love to hear your feedback on this in the comments below because while there is a very large authorized dealer that's admitted to doing this practice, I know there are some out there that do not do this. They actually have a real waiting list. Sure, I'm sure there's a bit of favoritism still, so we can't say hundred with 100% certainty, but I know many people who went, got on a list, and were able to get a hot in-demand Rolex watch, and they didn't have the biggest spend with that brand. So I think that it's also fair to say that, you know, while so clearly there's an AD that does this. There are some that don't always. So I would love to hear in the comments below what you think about this particular scenario, what the ADs are doing, as well as what's in your collection that perhaps you got from a waiting list. Anyway, guys, just a short video to touch on this topic and see in the comments below your feelings on this. Um, you can find me on Instagram, the real John P and Delray You have been chatting with John P. Ciao.